Hi, I'm Sandata here at Villarreal Jr. Welcome to Video Assisted Instruction, Data File Structure and Algorithm Series. Today is our lecture number 3. Let's proceed to our topic for today. Okay, from problems to program, a continuation which is part 2 of the topic. So we're going to proceed with formal specification patterns and solution patterns. Last time, we finished classification patterns. Okay, formal specification patterns, a set of patterns to get formal specification for problems previously classified in classification pattern. Without classification pattern, the part one, you cannot go directly to formal specification patterns. They provide a rigorous description of the problem using notation based on logic and mathematics. The specification describes the data and problems operation in the abstract manner without any stipulations about how this should be implemented. Problems are described as functions using prepost semantics. So we have two formal specification patterns. The first one is the formal specification this is how to describe the program behavior precisely in a formal way the second one is quantification specification this is how to describe the behavior of quantification problem precisely in a formal way now these two join together but they have different function in terms of the patterns itself both of them have its different function. Now, without formal specification, we cannot go directly to quantification specification. But this uh, quantification specification, because it is quantified, uh, it goes to any direction like case studies. It goes also to the solution patterns. It goes also to the data description. So that is the idea. Now we have here on the first uh, formal specification pattern is also a word formal specification without its pattern. A specification language consists of syntax and this is what you call the notation. An example of that is uh, if, then, else, while, printf, scanf, integer, so sharp include. So those are considered to be syntax and that is notation. To identify easily what is a syntax, it is a language used in computer. Now next is semantics. This is what you call the meaning. For example, we have uh, printf. What is the meaning of printf? So printf stands for print format function. So print is print, f is format, and another f is a function or the open and close parenthesis. And that is what you call semantics. The third one is satisfies. Relation defining which object satisfies which notation. When we said satisfies, I you can use this syntax. Okay, you can use this. I I it can be run. There should be no error. And that is what you call the satisfies from a formal specification. Another is uh, if you're going to create a flowchart that describe those kind of notation or meaning so it can also be satisfied next is a formal specification defines so syntax defines a signature of the mapping semantics defines as meaning of the mappings that's why uh, I mentioned about the uses of it the code and the, the diagram or the satisfaction we have exception undefined erroneous mapping and that is exception so what are the exception example for example you run the program it runs but it displays error and that's what you call exception error that is undefined erroneous mapping so when we said undefined you define integer but it you uses float or you define a character but you needed integer that is exception undefined erroneous mapping it means to say it will run your program but it will interpret 
a missing or linking or an error. So in figure 6 shows the quantification specification. Uh, we have here the model and this is mathematics. Uh, A goes to K1B, B, K2C, and C, K3D. This is what you call the data itself and they use this model like this one ABC and interpret as the direction or flow as K1, K2, K3. Now the second one we have quantitative or quantitative data from the word quantification specification. So quantity means to say uh, you cannot uh, exactly count on it. That's why we have here B uh, function 20 equals 36. C uh, function 150 is equals to 40. Okay, you cannot exactly count on it. Qualitative data is something like a number that you can count. So right here we have B is greater than C. So we can identify that B is greater than C at time 40. So this is what you call, there is a what you call uh, a time bound uh, data evaluation. B is greater than C, then B is less than C, then B is less than C at time 60, 80, and 100. So if you notice, uh, there's a what you call quantification. So quantification identified, uh, we have quantitative and qualitative. So uh, you can use this, but I prefer if you are starting, you can use quantitative. But if you have the complete uh, answer of your problem, then you can go to qualitative. That's it. We're finished now with formal specification patterns. Now let's go to our last topic, which is solution patterns. Solution patterns, a set of patterns to design solutions for problems previously specified. They allow the transformation of specification in formal or formal defining the effect of a program. An example, we have the meaning of the problem into an algorithmic notation, similar to a formal programming, something like a formal specification, which define how this effect is achieved in a procedural programming language, but omitting finer details. So we have five solution patterns. This is what you call case analysis, identifies how to, to write a solution for a case analysis problem. Number two is iterative accumulation quantification. It identifies how to write an iterative solution for an accumulation quantification problem. Number three is iterative search quantification. How to write an iterative solution for a search quantification problem. And number four, we have iterative extremal quantification. This is how to write an iterative solution for an extremal quantification problem. So by the way, if you are not aware of what is extremal, it is something like construction, whether it is uh, right or wrong, that is extremal. Now, let's discuss the first one, which is case analysis under solution patterns. So case analysis, how to write a solution for a case analysis problem. Now the goal of case analysis is not to develop a set of correct facts, but to learn to reason well with available data. It means to say, you cannot learn without the data itself. Okay, so let's go from the beginning, from the Jurassic world, okay? So, how do we learn that there are dinosaurs before? Because there are data. There are facts. Which this geoscience physics scientists, okay, uh, they discovered that recovered remains of those bones of dinosaurs. And that's what they call the facts. But we cannot set as correct because it was being uh, assembled yet, all of the bones, okay, to form a figure. That is the idea of case analysis. Although there is no perfect solution, that is true even we are writing a what is so-called program. So we develop the program but 
it is not 100% accurate at it is. Even Google has its error, even its Facebook has its error, even uh, YouTube. So there are plenty of errors and but the best thing here is that we are solving one at a time of the problem and goes to the perfect solution. So if you have a problem in yourself as a personal then don't go exactly for the perfect solution because there is no yet perfect solution but we can solve the problem one at a time especially we need to solve it the small problem first because we can get the output of that with a small solution that is the idea now how to write solution to a case analysis problem so to write a solution you need first the problem statement the problem statement is the case analysis should begin with a very brief description of the background and key players in the scenario. This description provides a context of the problem. When we said this, it meant to say that only the included part, only the included members, only the included groups is considered to be analyzed in the problem statement. So do not go far away. Do not include any, any people uh, in the problem statement but stay foot and look for who's uh, beside you who's inside who's your group mates that can be used for the context of the problem letter B analysis of issues some helpful hints use concept theories and or empirical evidence reported in the management literature our text and assigned reading to provide a framework for your analysis and support for your conclusion. So when we said framework, there are people who already use that kind of strategy and they already solve the problem. That is what we call the framework. Of course, we have plenty of framework, but in thesis, we use as two conceptual framework and theoretical framework right here in data structure in the analysis of issue under patterns we need to use theories so that's why this is what you call theoretical framework so when we said theoretical framework under analysis of issues you need to provide theories that those people before already solved problems because these theories has its evidences unlike you're going to have a conceptual there is no evidence at all in conceptual because that's only a concept but we can use also concepts especially if you are creating a new technology or new program or a new problem like pandemic so in pandemic we cannot use theories as framework but we can use concept framework because this is something new and nobody knows about the truth so this is what they called concept theory but if there are already been solved the problem like SARS so and you need to study SARS then you can identify theoretical framework that's it for the analysis of issue now let us see we have recommended action justify your decision with facts from the case and concept models and or findings from the text and readings so when we said recommended action is what did you do and what they the text or the researcher do so you're going to compare that and you might think what are the differences between the two and we can have a solution of what are considered to be the, the recommendation you're going to justify because you are learning you're studying something like you can have an idea because all people have its idea but there are what you call good ideas and br brilliant ideas and these good ideas and brilliant ideas came from those uh, who study well of what they are doing we have plenty of models like OOP object oriented uh, programming is one of the model it uses OOD object oriented design and this OOD is the model of OOP and right now if you notice in area of uh, technology so plenty of system are considered to be already OOD object oriented uh, design so that is the example of recommended action rather than using DOS based like uh, we use in COBOL and uh, we cannot install COBOL because it use it run in Windows XP Windows 95 Windows 98 because it's uh, too old so 
but it has also a model. And that's why we're finding by justification of the decision that we cannot run COBOL in Windows 10 and even Windows 8 and even Windows 7. Next, letter D is evaluation criteria. So this application of obituaries concept in analysis and recommendation section like depth of analysis, organization logic, quality of writing, conformity to case analysis guidelines. Remember, this is considered to be the case analysis. So we need to evaluate after all of the, the theories you use for the system you're going to develop. And another is which are the best of it. That's why we have the what you call the depth of analysis. And this depth of analysis must be discussed because this is a huge topic also. So we can identify the depth of analysis, right? So how depth the analysis of the problem and the implementation of the solution and the result of it goes okay, into percentage. Next, we have organization logic. So when you said organization logic, of course, logic is answerable by zeros and one, true or false, yes or no, something like there should be no in the middle. So pass or fail, that is logic, on or off, so that's logic. So in the organization of the theories we have is that if you don't have any theories, then you are considered to be off, you are considered to be false, you are considered to be out. Why? Because in studying, we use these theories. That is our guide. But without this guide, it's very impossible for us. Because it has two answers, of course, yes or no. It can be possible also that the result is no. For example, you create a program and then suddenly you cannot finish the program. And that is organizationally logic as false because you didn't finish the program itself. So next is the quality of writing. How do we write the program, the code from the theory itself? So in the quality of writing, of course, there's a what you call number one beautification. How do we understand your code easily? Even you sent it to other of your member or group mates. Easily understandable, easily renowned, easily reprogrammed. So there should be no hindrances. There are what you call comments in the writings. There are what you call annotations. That is the quality of writings we have. Next, we have conformity to case analysis guidelines. So conformity, you are conforming that uh, in your analysis, uh, you decided to use plenty of theories that are already been uh, there and that can help you to solve the problem. Number two we have under solution patterns is iterative accumulation quantification. By the way, when we said iterative, that's increment. Okay, so the three is increment. Iterative accumulation, iterative search, iterative, iterative extremal, and the last is iterative construction. Again, those four iterative are increment and decrement theory. So this is how to write an iterative solution for an accumulation quantification problem. So for initialization, condition, incrementation, so the body, so you will notice on the figure 7 shows the iterative program using loop and it's answerable by true or false. So next we have iterative search quantification how to write an iterative solution for a search quantification problem. Iterative searching is iterative. That is true. For example, you go to YouTube, you type on the search. You go to Facebook, you type on the search. That is what you call iterative. It will look out everything you type on the first place, which is the letter. Okay? If you type C, then they're going to look all the C's on the database itself. Then afterwards, you type A, it will go to CA. So they are searching. That's why it is called iterative. So figure 8 shows the iterative search in tree structure. So this is the tree structure we have. There's a what do you call 0 goes to 1 goes to 3 because it's iterative. The path followed by a data file structure. DFS, data file structure. We have 0 going to 2. Node to be search because this is a tree, so it could be possible binary, binary tree. So 0, 1, 2. Then 1, 3, 4. Then 2, 5, 6. So everything is by, means 2. There's also a node to be search like this one, 2. Suppose we want to find the node 2 of the given infinite undirected graph 3. A DFS starting from the node 0 will dive left towards the node 1 and so on. 
whereas the node 2 is just adjacent to node 1. Hence, a DFS wastes a lot of time in coming back to node 2. An iterative deepening the first search overcomes this uh, and quick find the required node. So that's it. They are going to search for the number 2. And they use a uh, what do you call theory. That first search is they're going to go directly to the first three which has plenty of subfolders. So these are hard drive zero, subfolders one, two, and sub uh, folder of one is three and four. So those are subfolders. Next we have number four, iterative extremal quantification. How to write an iterative solution for an extremal quantification problem. In figure 9, shows the extremal quantification in a network. So you will notice in a network, of course, there are a series of number uh, like ping or the network number. We have the MAC address number. Okay, so the physical address number. So there are plenty of numbers. And these are considered to be extremal. It can be correct and it can be wrong. Supposed to be, we have 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 06, and how this goes to 0, 05, 0, 04, 0, 09. That is the idea. Where's the direction? So it goes to 0, 02, 0, 04, 0, 06, then goes to 0, 02, 0, 04, 0, 09. And you will notice there's no way that they're going to 0, 05, 0, 04, 0, 09. That's why this is considered to be an er error. Now, if there goes right here, and you will notice the arrow itself, that it goes right here and right here, but there is no direction going to 0, 05, 0, 03, 0, 06. But we have here also, and there is no again arrow going to 0, 05, 0, 3, 0, 6 because 0, 05, 0, 3, 0, 6 are going out only and there's no in of the data. So that's the idea of extremal quantification. It can be classified as it is an iterative or increment or decrement but it can be possibly right and it can be possibly wrong. So in a network, even you have your network, sometimes you didn't get the, the internet or the data that you, you need but you are on on the network. And that is extremal wrong. But if you have the network, then suddenly you can uh, browse, then that is extremal true. Next, we have five iterative construction quantification. How to write an iterative solution for a construction quantification problem. Figure 10 shows the iterative construction. So we have here the task going down, and that is classified as subtask 1. And another is uh, two condition, unsearchable by true or false and another condition which is considered to be true or false also and you have the subtask so of the subtask 1, subtask 2 that is sequential sequential in terms of list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 something like that there's no uh, jumping so 1, 2, 3, 4 that's it now right here we have the subtask interrupt this is what you called interrupt when we said interrupt is something like it is hook up and there is no way that you're going to interchange it so sometimes we request interrupt and that is what we call interrupt request like you you plug usb uh, mouse on your laptop then it will go to the interrupt and they're going to say we have a new keyboard or mouse which is connected in usb port and they're going to have a task that it will activate those mouse and keyboard that is what you call interrupt another is under condition iterative in condition iterative it's very easy for us for statement while statement do statement um, case statement those are condition of iterative conditional of course this is conditional relation we use this uh, greater than less than exactly equal not equal those are conditional so this is very easy for us to understand. So validation board, classification of patterns, BG2, formal specification pattern, and solution pattern from BG3. That's all for today. Thank you for watching and good luck. Congratulations, you successfully finished our lecture number three.